News 6 at 9. Here's your 58. Good morning on your Thursday. Here are your big stories on News 6 at 9 in less than a minute. In just moments, we're expecting a press conference on the highly anticipated Mueller report set to come out this morning. What it could mean for the two year long Russia investigation. More hot weather on the way today, but the front you're looking at right there on the radar is expected to bring some strong, severe weather for tomorrow, and we're pinpointing it for your weekend. Then a brush fire burning hundreds of acres in Brevard County, the issues it's caused for this morning's commute and how close it got to some homes. Plus, teens getting into trouble and police discovered. Many of them didn't even have diplomas, so they figured out how to get crime results and help more kids graduate. Plus, can ice cream be healthy? Consumer Reports takes a bite to find some that tastes good and won't kill your diet. Those are our big stories. News 6 at 9 starts in three minutes. Stay with us. Live from News 6 and ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 9. Well, good morning. I'm Candace Campos. So happy you're with us on this Thursday. I'm Julie Broughton. And I'm Bridget Ellison. We have plenty to get to today. And, you know, one thing that I think about a lot is sleep. Yes. yes. And Lack of, a lot right? of us aren't getting <laughs> enough sleep, right? Especially parents. So yes. today we have an expert in talking to us about, you know, ways to get a better night's rest, as well as some of those dangers, probably hidden dangers to many of you. So we'll look at some of the ways we can make sleep better and safer. I'm you looking know, forward to that. I was yeah. looking at some of the talking points she sent over and some of this stuff I had never thought oh, of. So right. it is some really important information mm -hmm. that we all need to be thinking about. And we also have coming up Eric Von Aiken's Getting Crime Results story and it is so great Tear this jerker. week. I mean, it's yes. good every week, but he goes to Volusia County where the sheriff's office has a program where they're helping teens get their high school diploma. Law enforcement there happened to notice a lot of the kids they were arresting did not have their high school diploma. So we'll see how their program is getting crime results and hear from one young lady that the program's really helped. It's yeah, a feel good story. It, it is. certainly is. Not all crime results stories are feel good, <laughs> but this one is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we have a lot of plans. We have Passover starting uh, tomorrow evening. We have Easter on Sunday. Uh, weather is playing a vital role and a vital part of our uh, festivities. Strong to severe storms will be possible for tomorrow. We're going to be breaking down hour by hour what you can expect. The good news is, a little light at the end of the tunnel, that the weather is looking fantastic for the weekend. Wonderful. Friday, not so yeah, much. Rough we'll, day tomorrow. Yeah, rough mm -hmm. day tomorrow. We'll get more on that coming up in just a couple minutes. But first, though, nearly two years after Special Counsel Robert Mueller began his investigation of Russian meddling in the 2016 election, the public will see his final report today. Democrats have been demanding the release of this report, but they're not happy at how it's being done. Attorney General William Barr is planning a press conference this morning before the redacted report is given to Congress and the public. Now, Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with more details on that release. President Trump says he's confident ahead of today's release of Robert Mueller's nearly 400 page report. You'll see a lot of uh, very Strong things come out tomorrow. A redacted version will be made public this morning. We will provide explanatory notes describing the basis uh, for each redactions. Just before its release, Attorney General William Barr is expected to hold a news conference. He has briefed the White House on the report. House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler accuses Barr of covering for President Trump. Attorney General Barr is not allowing the facts of the Mueller report to speak for themselves but is trying to bake in the narrative. Former acting assistant attorney general Mary McCord says the public will soon be able to make its own judgments. There's a whole lot of daylight in between nothing happened and a crime was committed. CBS News has learned the president's personal attorneys have been working on a counter report that's been in the works for months. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And here is a live look at where that press conference will be happening with Attorney General Barr set for 930 this morning. Of course, our live coverage will happen right here on News 6 and ClickOrlando.com. And we will break in with that as soon as it happens. And as soon as that report comes out, we'll be pouring over it and releasing more details, helping break down the analysis of it and have reaction throughout the day here on News 6. And right now, firefighters are keeping a, still a very close eye on a big brush fire burning out in Brevard County. Now, the fire broke out yesterday near the Flora Vista neighborhood near Port St. John. That's just west of I-95. 
Ezzy Castor joins us there now. And Ezzy, a section of the road, uh, 407, just reopened, correct? That's right, Candace. Uh, troopers just opened 407 about 30 minutes ago. But let me show you what it looks like from the Heart Horse Farm Rescue here. You can still see smoke going. I mean, this was happening yesterday and this morning. You can still see what's going on out here. And then that gives you an idea of how close it got to the horses on this farm. And we just spoke to the homeowner out here. She says she is relieved that this stuff did not get any worse looked out and realized that the fire that we were monitoring, um, my barn manager, Glennis, was watching the fire over there, had quickly spread over here. Susanna Norris says flames came within feet from her property at the Hidden Acres Rescue for Thoroughbreds. She said it was a last minute move that saved her 35 horses from a brush fire. In those moments of crisis, I mean, the best thing to do is stay calm and keep your wits about you and take charge and do what needs to be done. Fire officials say the brush fire started at around 2.30 yesterday near Port St. John and quickly grew to cover 300 acres. The flames ended up shutting down State Road 407 between the Beach Line and I-95. At one point, the Brevard County Sheriff's Office said the fire was threatening about 50 structures. Um, the helicopter was right on top of us, dropping water for a good hour, hour and a half. And again, State Road 407 is now back open to drivers, but troopers are warning drivers to just keep take it easy and look out for smoke, if anything, because obviously there is still smoke happening out here in Brevard County. And also, we spoke to troopers, and they believe that this all happened with a car fire in the woods that unfortunately just got out of control. Candace. Yeah, Ezzy, we are certainly in the peak of that dry season, so any little spark could start a fire. Thank you. Well, now to a positive update on our push to drive change and strengthen Florida's texting and driving laws. The Senate version of a bill that would ban all cell phone use that's not hands-free has passed its final committee. That means it's now on its way to a vote in the full Senate. This bill is more restrictive than the House version. If it clears both houses, a conference committee will work out the differences. If you'd like to help us get results on this, we have posted a full list of state senators and representatives on our website so you can make your voices heard. Just go to clickorlando.com slash driving change. And this is such good news. This mm -hmm. is something that News 6 and specifically Matt Austin have been working on since September 2016 when Matt was hit by a driver causing serious injuries. And that driver admitted he was texting and driving. So check out that list of your state representatives and let's get this done. Yeah. Right. Push it forward. You know, speaking of those roads, let's get a look at them and the traffic with traffic safety expert trooper Steve brought to you by Napleton and we've had some complications today. Uh, this morning was a mess. I like to call it a soup sandwich, but we're slowly, slowly starting to relax a little bit. Like Ezzy Castor reported a little while ago, Highway Patrol troopers have opened all of State Road 407. No need to detour, but if you're out there and you catch yourself in some, you know, not great visibility, dial star 347 star FHP on your phone. Let the troopers know so we can make sure they go ahead and shut that down. Looking at everything else, let's head a little further west into town. Very slow eastbound I-4 in the attractions area right around 530 35 this morning, but it clears up a little bit after that. We do have a crash though at Sand Lake Road and Orange Avenue. FHP reporting this one with injuries and roadblocks. So if you're traveling towards maybe the Florida Mall this morning, be careful in that area. Now to this, I do have another traffic alert that's affecting thousands of drivers in the downtown Orlando area. A major train change is bringing two busy exits together. The eastbound exit to South Street is now combined with the exit to the 408. It's part of course that I-4 Ultimate Project, and the change is happening in what's already one of the most congested spots in downtown Orlando. Project leaders say this is needed to make way for a more construction. We have about 12,000 drivers a day that use that South Street ramp. Now we're adding that to an already busy, congested 408 ramp. As you can see from this image right here, the South Street exit is now a quarter mile sooner. Those exiting at the 408 will stay in the left, and those drivers going to South Street will go in the right lane. News 6 reporter Mark Lehman tells us that it's been, he's been seeing some delays in the eastbound I-4 area near the exit this morning, so you got to make sure that you're careful through there. While South Street and the 408 will be combined for the next year and a half, FDOT says it will only uh, be a couple months before there's a new configuration in that area. Surprise, right? We'll keep you updated on all those changes right here on News 6. Ladies, back to you.
Thank you so much, Steve. Follow those signs. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye out, right? Well, only on six, turning troubled teens around in school and in life so they don't end up in trouble with the law. Police in Volusia County noticed many of the teens they were taking to jail didn't have diplomas, so they worked with the school district in a car dealership to get crime results with tutors. News 6's Eric Von Aken has the emotional story of how it helped one teen turn her life around and how their tutoring program is getting crime results. My dad passed away two days before his birthday at the end of the school year, my eighth grade year. After losing her father, Tara Frazier had a really good reason to give up. I didn't want to do school anymore. I was so upset about like not having a dad. I didn't have a lot of friends, gained a bunch of weight. By the time she was ready to come back to Deltona High School, her senior year last August, she was a year and a half behind. Graduation and a diploma were out of reach and out of mind. Let's take about uh, 20 minutes to do the exercise. Until Mr. G and something called Aspire, a Volusia County Schools tutoring program to get kids back on track towards graduation. And when you don't have that, you're starting out sort of behind everybody else. Many of the young people arrested do not have diplomas. They didn't have any other choice but crime. The Police Athletic League of Central Daytona Beach discovered, so they secured a life-changing donation, $100,000 from Daytona Toyota to get crime results. Just a couple of hours after school, twice a week, and it literally could have been the one reason that actually is why I get to graduate. So suddenly, Tara and 20 students at each of Volusia County's high schools now have a choice and a chance. Tara got to work with Mr. G, catching up on her courses. They're giving you a little bit of a backstory. And studying for the ACT or the SAT, getting a minimum score would count for a diploma. When you really want something, you gotta work for it, even if it's hard. Even if you've been through a bunch of crap, even if you want to cry every single day, you it's a, if I can get through high school, imagine how great life is going to be. If I can get through this last month, I can get my cap and gown. I'd be my mom's first daughter to graduate, my dad's first kid to graduate. Thanks to Aspire, Mr. G, and Tara's newly discovered determination, she is now back on track, not just for graduation, but hopefully, she says, for life. I want a good life. I want to be that 40 year old woman and look at my 10 year old child and be like, she's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. He's going to get an education and he's going to get a good job and he's going to have a great life. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> and I'm only 18. Here in Volusia County, the graduation rate is about 79%, according to administrators. So because of the Aspire program, that means an additional 4% of students will get high school diplomas. According to administrators, Aspire is really the only program like it in all of Central Florida, largely thanks to that big donation. In Deltona, Volusia County, Eric Von Anken getting crime results due six. Talk about second chances. Absolutely. Oh, the Aspire program also pays the students a $250 donation to motivate them to pass their test. Tara tells us that money meant so much to her. You can tell it really does. Yes. Yeah, and Aspire also pays the test fees and for the study books to give the students every shot of, at success. And it's just a great story. And hearing Tara kind of just talk about her future as a 40-year-old woman, yes. you know, and just thinking about just a few years ago, she wasn't thinking past the next day. So having that future and that and that vision it's changed her life. Changed her life. Yes, what an incredible program. Yes. That is my favorite story I've seen in a long time. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sleep is a critical element that allows us to stay healthy and focused during the day. And unfortunately, poor sleep patterns are too common. And there are also dangerous sleep habits that we might not even realize we have. Luckily, though, there are ways to get results. Up next, consumer advocate Elizabeth Leamy will join us on set to discuss the ways to get a safer night's sleep. All right, you're watching News 6 Getting Results. Wake up. It's the morning. We'll be right back. <laughs> this portion of the news is brought to you by the Orlando Solar Bears. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. There's so much information about safe sleep for babies, which of course is very important, but mm -hmm. what about safe sleep for the rest of us? Well, turns out there are concrete steps you can take to sleep more safely, which can help us sleep more soundly. When we're all ears, yes. right? Yeah. 
Joining us now, Emmy-winning consumer reporter Elizabeth Leamy. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, you have some great tips on Thanks. making things safer, which, I, I mean, there were some, some surprising dangers that we hadn't even considered. Talk to us about it. Right, so the idea is peace of mind mm -hmm. is one way to sleep more soundly, right? So first of all, close your bedroom door when you're asleep. And the reason for this, it buys you more time in the event of a fire. Decades ago, we had 17 minutes to get out of our house alive, but mm -hmm. now thanks to open floor plans and other factors, houses are burning way hotter and faster. You Ooh, only my have goodness. three minutes or less. My but a normal wooden door kept shut does a remarkable job, according to mm -hmm. testing by several different groups, does a remarkable job of keeping the heat, flames, smoke, especially at bay, and giving you more time to get out. And the mm. best thing about this tip, it's free. Exactly. Oh, so that. Why not yes. do it? Yeah, just close the door. Now, this one surprised me. I did not realize that there were different types of foam you need to be looking for in your mattress. I think you just go in, you lay down, and whatever feels mm -hmm. the best, but we need some specific things to look for. Yeah, absolutely. So a group called Serta Pure US is actually putting mattress th foam through rigorous independent testing and even surprise spot checks to make sure it does not contain chemicals of concern. We're talking formaldehyde, tris flame retardants, things like that. Oh. Yeah, and this is a tiny <laughs> little nonprofit. Yeah. yeah, right. So I've got you thinking, right? I was so impressed with what this little group is doing for consumers that I partnered with them to try to get the word out. They've been around for a decade. What's that S name again? Serta Pure US. Okay. So if your mattress is more than 10 years old, you may be sleeping on things that you would rather not if you care about mm. indoor air quality. Mm. Now, if you want to scope out a new mattress you're considering, all you have to do is go to that Serta Pure US website mm -hmm. and look at the list of participating manufacturers. And it pops right up, by the way, if you just Google certified foam. I mean, when you think about how much mm -hmm. time you spend at least laying in your bed, whether or yes. not you're sleeping soundly or not, but you, I mean, all that stuff you might a be even- A third of your life. A third of your life. <laughs> that sounds quite nice. Yes, I wish it was a third of my life. Right? <laughs> well, moving on to tip number three, you warn people not to ignore signs of sleep apnea. So this is something that is more of a medical condition. Right, so of course, sleep apnea is where you stop breathing yeah. Yeah. multiple times dangerous. during your sleep, and 80% of the people who have it don't know it. They're undiagnosed. That's according to the American Sleep Apnea Association. So folks, be looking for the warning signs. Snoring is not just an annoyance. It's a top <laughs> sign of sleep apnea. Also waking with a morning headache, gasping for breath. All of these are signs mm -hmm. that you should get to a sleep doctor and get diagnosed because sleep apnea can kill you either yeah. quickly because you stop breathing right. or slowly mm -hmm. because it leads to other problems, heart disease, high blood pressure, and so mm -hmm. on. A lot of times you end up with a CPAP machine, but right. those are improving, right? Yes, and there are actually also dental devices that can sometimes Good. help. It depends on your case. So the best option if you think you have this is to go do a sleep study. Yes, and you either spend one night in a sleep center or sometimes they're doing them at home now. So there's really oh, no barrier. I didn't hear that. Yep. Yeah, they, they yeah. hook you up and it's kind of like getting and, an EKG. Hmm. They put right. a few little electrode things on you. You sleep. It's maybe not so well, <laughs> and right. then you have your answer. And Elizabeth, you brought in uh, this detector, which is really portable, and this is good for on-the-go travel. Tell us about that. Yeah. So this is a portable carbon monoxide detector, and of course, okay. I'm assuming that all of your smart accomplished viewers already have carbon monoxide detectors in their homes, right. but what about protecting your sleep when you travel? As a consumer reporter, I've covered way too many stories of families on their dream vacations dying in their sleep mm. because of this colorless, odorless gas. If you're awake, mm -hmm. you may notice the headache or something, but if you're asleep, Sometimes not. So the thing is, many other countries don't require CO detectors, even in hotels. And so many people now, even oh. in the U.S., when they mm -hmm. travel or staying in somebody else's, they're renting a home right. or apartment, that sort of thing. And half of the states in the U.S. do not require these. So mm. really, you should be protecting yourself. Fifteen bucks. I would never have Me thought either. of taking one if you're renting oh. a home. And we all do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are so many sites it's where it's such a great way. option. Yeah, I never would have thought of that. That is such a good tip. Throw yeah. that in with your toothbrush. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You have time for one more tip? Yeah. Sign up for emergency alerts on your uh, cell phone. Yeah. I had not, I knew <laughs> about these, but I had procrastinated until my family in California was near some of those wildfires. And the thing is, some of the people who died in those horrible California wildfires, they had no idea the fire had gotten mm. near their neighborhood oh because it happened while they were sleeping. They didn't mm. wake up. Yeah. So your county 
may have something, mm -hmm. but what I use is the Red Cross emergency alert system on my phone because it protects me at home and with GPS, it also will alert you to emergencies again when you're traveling. Very nice. Yeah. All Great right. tips. Yes. Thank you, Thank Elizabeth. you so uh -huh. much. My pleasure. So we have a daily thing here. We do the meme of the day, which let's sometimes see what it's it weather is. related, sometimes it's not. Well, we have a lot of weather ahead, so let's talk weather. It's too hot in the spring and summer, oh, and it's too cool Way. in the fall and the winter. Can we just have it a happy <laughs> medium? I feel like we just don't have a right to complain because I, we it's really fabulous don't. most we of really the time. We really don't. All right, and let's see our viewer picture from Eric Sandoval. Oh, pretty. He always sends Ooh. wonderful pictures. Epcot? This is from, it's Lake Eola, the oh. little pagoda there at Lake Eola. Oh my. Mm -hmm. We live in <laughs> Disney World. I mean, it's, I mean, we have such beautiful things around everywhere. And it is going to be a nice day if you maybe want to take a little walk around Lake Eola, primarily because it's mostly shaded. It is going to be hot. We're talking temperatures in the mid to low 90s, about, running about 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year, and that's all building up ahead of another strong front. The warmer we get today and tomorrow, the stronger storms will be pushing in on Friday. So right now we're at 73 in Sanford, 78 in Cocoa Beach, 78 as well in Melbourne. Taking here hour by hour, we're at 90 degrees across our interior zones between about 91 and 92 degrees with a few showers around. Rain chances today only about 10 to 20 percent, but we do have a severe weather probability here. A moderate to slight risk of, uh, I should say marginal risk, um, of seeing some severe weather. Enhanced risk, meaning isolated tornadoes will be possible. Hail will be a cer certainly a possibility there. So again, make sure you are weather alert for tomorrow. We talked about making sure you have your pinpoint weather app handy. Those type of disaster apps, that's one of them. It's free to download, and that's certainly something you want to have on hand tomorrow. You can see rain chances are up to 90%, strong to severe storms after 2 o'clock. Then look at Saturday and Sunday. Can we pick a better weekend for some holidays? Uh, Passover on Saturday, Sunday, Easter, looking great. Got to get through Friday. Yes. Well, on a warm day like today, my, may I suggest maybe an ice cream cone? <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to limit yourself with that sweet stuff, but these days many brands are claiming to offer some healthier choices. Is it possible for ice cream to be low calorie, low in fat and sugar, and still be satisfying? <laughs> Consumer Reports gives us the inside scoop coming up. Florida Resort. The age-old dog versus cat debate continues, and as someone who's had both, I have to say I absolutely loved my cats, but I'm a dog person at heart. Mm. So. Yeah, that's a hard choice to make. They're both great pets, but if you are a dog person and an animal person like Julie, the findings <laughs> of this recent survey won't surprise you. I don't know if chinchillas are on the list there, Julie, <laughs> but they should be. The survey found that dog owners are much happier than people with cats. Mm. I know. I'm not saying this. I'm just saying what? research shows. Click Orlando. Com's Brianna Bowles is here now to break down this study, and people might get a little heated with this, Brie. I know, but it's an important question. Are you a dog or a cat person? The way someone answers that question can tell you a lot about them, and the findings of this annual general social survey confirm that. So let's take a look at the study, which was conducted at the University of Chicago. It found that 36% of dog owners considered themselves very happy, while only 18% of cat owners could say the same. As a dog mom who knows how wonderful the unconditional love of a puppy is, I'm not shocked. But there's more of a science behind the findings than you might think. Cat owners, do you take your felines for walks? Probably not. The study says since dog owners are more likely to be out and about with their furry friends, they're more likely to form friendships with neighbors who are out doing the same. So having said that, dog owners are also more likely to engage in outdoor physical activity. Um, hello, vitamin D and beautiful nature. See, it makes sense. Another finding from the study, people who own dogs not only seek comfort in their pets, they're more likely to include their pup as part, part of the family, a whopping 93% of people to be exact. So I want to know, what are you? Do you agree with the study? Are you a dog or a cat person? Let us know whether you agree with the study's findings by voting in our poll on clickorlando.com and whether you have a cat or a dog or a chinchilla, Julie. We obviously <laughs> all like to talk about our fur babies. So after you vote, scroll down in the story and tell us why you love yours in the comments. I am team dog. Yeah, and you know what, mm -hmm. that makes so much sense right. because I feel like when you're out walking around, anybody with a dog, you can always talk to them because dog people are so friendly and it's Correct. always a good conversation starter when you have your dog. Yeah, I mean, just both. Just, oh, yeah. just love them both, I guess. I mean, it's interesting when, I, when I'm when i trying to find people to do good news uh, mm -hmm. when I'm out in the community, I always try to find people with dogs because I know they're like, you know, they're not in a rush 
You know, it's right. not like, hey, could you have a second to talk? They're just hanging out. Would you like to talk? Sure, of course. Yeah. So I have to agree with that one. Well, whether it's soft serve or out mm -hmm. of the carton, it's hard to turn down some ice cream. I have just a big barrel of it just while mm -hmm. I watch TV. But this sweet, cool tree can be healthy. That's a big question mark, right? Makers of light and low calorie frozen desserts want you to think that it is possible. <laughs> Consumer Reports dug into pint after pint to find a healthier treat that tastes like traditional ice cream. Hmm. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for. Ice cream is one of my favorite desserts. <laughs> but can a frozen treat claiming to be sweet and satisfying without the fat and sugar of real ice cream hit the spot instead? Consumer Reports tested 13 frozen vanilla flavored treats, including light and low fat ice creams, frozen yogurts, and non-dairy frozen desserts for taste, texture, and nutrition. To achieve the taste and texture of regular ice cream, these lighter ice creams have a lot of additives, like gums, sugar substitutes, protein concentrates, and even added fiber. CR testers tried two of best-selling brand Halo Tops offerings. The vanilla bean light ice cream got very good marks for taste, with moderate vanilla flavor, butterscotch, and eggy notes. Testers found the texture slightly icy. But Halo Top's vanilla maple dairy-free frozen dessert landed near the bottom of the ratings right, due to a bitter aftertaste and chalky mouthfeel. Halo Top, like several other brands, lists calories per pint on the front label. Just because you can eat the whole pint doesn't mean you should. It distorts your idea of what a reasonable serving is. Here are two picks from Consumer Reports testers. Stonyfield Organic Frozen Non-Fat Yogurt got very good marks for nutrition. It contains live and active cultures and is one of two frozen yogurts that scored near the top of the ratings. And Consumer Reports recommends Blue Bunny's Vanilla Bean Frozen Yogurt. It got very good marks for taste and nutrition. Testers note its distinct vanilla flavor and creamy texture. Now, also, if you're vegan or if you have trouble digesting dairy, Consumer Reports checked out some vegan frozen desserts that use coconut milk rather than dairy. Now, they're not necessarily healthier because, like cow's milk, coconut milk is high in saturated fat. So, the debate continues. So, I can't swap out salad for ice cream. At least not yet. I think you can, but just not <laughs> I just every day. Want the, the real thing. Yeah. I've tried right. some of those. But, the real uh, thing once in a while. Yeah. yeah. Or and just the right serving size. Exactly. Yeah, right? A little treat. Be smart. Yeah, we deserve it. All right, well, yes. still to come on the news at 9, Attorney General Barr is set to release a redacted version of Robert Mueller's report detailing the findings of the special counsel investigation. And just before its release, the Attorney General is expected to hold a press conference right there any second. That is coming up. You're watching News 6 at 9, getting results. We'll be right back. Look to see a, a nearly two-year investigation and as we just heard the attorney general say the special counsel's report states that the investigation did not establish that members of the trump 